Okay, so just a few hours after uploading this video, I was informed that there is a much easier way to create mouse regions. In fact, this method even provides visual representation of the region. All you need to do is press the Steam button and enable the controller HUD. That's it. Look, perfect, both of those. Unfortunately, it won't show you real-time updates as you adjust any of the configs on your mouse region. However, it will show you where your mouse regions are after you exit out of the configurator and go back into the game. So with that said, the rest of this video still has merit, as I do explain what the configuration options do and provide a nice process to make region making easier. But the HUD really does make the process much simpler than it was before. So, with that said, here's the rest of the original video in its entirety. Thanks. Hello everyone. Welcome to this in-depth look at mouse regions and how to incorporate them properly into a config. If you are curious about what mouse regions can accomplish, then you can check out a companion video to this one where I showcase three ways to utilize it in League of Legends, a top-down MOBA. Links for that can be found in a card at the end of the video or in the description. For this video, I will be going over each individual option of the mouse region and explaining how they work in conjunction with each other. For this video, I will be using League of Legends again, but this time I'll walk through the steps it took to get the minimap camera movement bound to the right pad. As a forewarning, there are two caveats with mouse region. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, the software doesn't give visu visualization of the size or placement of a mouse region. This is actually the reason I decided to make this video, since the lack of visual feedback can be disheartening and might turn off users for making configs that utilize them. Also, the size and placement are affected by resolution and DPI scaling. This basically means that sharing mouse region configs is difficult. If a user downloads your config and has a different DPI scaling or a different resolution, then the regions could be the wrong size or move to a completely different part of the screen. These two hiccups result in a bit of difficulty when creating and sharing configs that utilize mouse region. Granted, it doesn't make them impossible, just more tedious than it should be. With that out of the way, let's get started. While there aren't as many options for the mouse region as other touchpad styles of input, there are still enough to not really know what you're doing or where to start, though the mouse goes way under the screen. This is because of scaling, and I'll explain that later. I found that the best place to begin with is the positioning, these two sliders here. Unlike size and scale, this is the only option that offers the user concrete feedback to their decisions, a center of origin. Lucky for us, the minimap has an easy to find center. The horizontal position slider goes from left to right, while the vertical position slider goes from bottom to top. So let's adjust these until we can click on the middle of the minimap by pressing the middle of the trackpad. So we need to go to the right and to the bottom. And unfortunately a lot of this is just going to be guess and check, but when I press the middle of the touchpad, we still need to go right a little bit, but our height looks to be all right. We'll bump it up a little bit, we'll go to the right a little bit more. And we've actually gone too far to the right. That looks to be about good. These are going to be very eyeballing kind of things. Our, our size is still ridiculously huge. But our center looks to be about, uh, about good. Somewhere in the general vicinity of it. So, now that we've got that, we're moving on to the difficult part, which is the scaling and size. Size is pretty simple to understand. It's uh, how big or small the region is. Scale can be thought of as an independent size, where a region size would adjust both the height and the length, the scale only indicates how big or small the individual height or length is. 
If you recall, the default settings had the mouse going off the bottom of the screen. That's because the horizontal and vertical scaling are equal. Thus, we had a square region, or a circle in the case of our trackpads. If we reduce the vertical scaling, making the height smaller, then we'll have a rectangle, or an ellipsis, which would better benefit a widescreen monitor. For the case of the minimap, though, it is a square, and we'll be keeping our two scales equal, though that doesn't mean we won't be adjusting them eventually. Unfortunately, from this point on, it's, ma it's mainly yes and check. We can make some educated guesses to hasten the procedure, but without any immediate feedback via an overlay, the best we can do is shift the slider a bit and see if the region feels right or is off a bit, and then try to correct it. So, we'll alter the size. And the size is still really large. Size is getting to be a lot better, but our center's off now. So I'll actually drop the center a little, I mean, the size a little bit. And our center needs to come up and right, and hopefully that won't be too much. and it is a little too much. So r right here is where we're going to introduce our scaling. And basically, if the distance between all the way left and all the way right in the default scaling is just for instance, random number here, 600 pixels, we reduce it and now all the way from left all the way right will only be 300 pixels. So while your thumb isn't moving any different, the cursor is moving less across the screen and that's how the scaling works so we're going to drop the scaling and because it's a square we're going to reduce them equally and now our center is still a little high and our size is too small so to compensate for the scale we'll increase the size a little bit centers better and we hit pretty much everything we need to I think I'm gonna pull back to the left a little bit since uh, we actually that's fine maybe I'll just drop it down a notch Alright, and that seems to look pretty good. The center feels to be about the center. It's a little off, but... Maybe if we tweak the scale down a bit... No, that made it feel worse. Alright, we're going to leave it like that. Now this was a bit easier since we were working with the square region, but in my last video I showcased a completely horizontal region for leveling up skills. When we go into that one, I'll show you that I actually completely negated the vertical scaling on it. If I reverse these settings and bring vertical up and reduce horizontal, it'll be a vertical column region. And of course, these can be mixed and matched to create all sorts of different shapes of ellipses or rectangles, uh, and different stoutness and squatness to fit whatever you need it to be. 
Now we come back in here and we have two more options on the main menu which is click binding and touch binding. These allow us to assign a key for when we touch or click the pad in. Clicking is more useful for navigating menus while touch is better for prolonged usage. Since we want the mini map to shift the camera on touch we'll go ahead and set the touch binding to left mouse. And now when we touch this the mini map moves with us. And actually as long as I put on camera lock character lock it'll snap back to the character as well afterwards. Now in the additional settings, we have outer ring binding radius and invert. These are no different from other input modes. And snap back on stop, snap mouse back on stop. What this does is put the mouse back to where it was on the screen before you warped it to the new position. As you may have noticed when I've been moving this around, as soon as I release it snaps back to the center. That just happens to be where the cursor was. If I put the cursor up here, oh, there we go. If I move the mouse up here and I come do the mini map, it goes back to that exact spot on the screen. Since I'm using mouse region for movement as well, this option isn't as useful since my mouse cursor already snaps back to my character. However, if I had a pad set to mouse, then this would have saved me from swiping the mouse back to the center of the screen after every time I use the mouse region. And if I turn that off, it stays exactly where I left it. So there you have it. Mouse regions aren't terribly complex, but they are a bit tedious to create in their current form. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to be updated on new videos and definitely look forward to my next mouse region video where I show off some advanced uses to get through UE heavy games. Until next time, keep innovating and keep gaming.